The peace of the Lord be with you, and good morning. This is our devotion for Tuesday, um, February 13th, and I'll be getting this out in the morning, so the follow the morning order, page 295 in the hymnal. And for our epistle lesson this week, we have uh, James chapter 1, verses 12 through 18. And um, I think this will be clear why this, this fits with the, with the gospel lesson, but um, we'll jump into that. So we'll go ahead and begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All right. Uh, James chapter 1, verses 12 through 18. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Let us pray. Um, Blessed God, our Heavenly Father, you every good gift and every perfect gift is from you, and we give you thanks for those gifts. We, we, we thank you for, um, most of all, the gift of, of your Son. Um, we thank you that um, in him we have the, the, the righteousness that, uh, that, that is steadfast under every trial, that, that he is the one who, who stood the test and has received the crown of life, that is promised to those who love you, and um, and so uh, we, we pray that you would bless us when tempted to 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 rest in in Him, in that steadfastness and strength that He gives to us, that promise that He that He will help us in temptation as the one who who has been tempted Himself. And we pray that um, that that we would recognize that it is not you that brings temptation to us, uh, that that it's our sinfulness and, and the, the pull on our sinful hearts, and we pray that you would, you would bless us in every trial and temptation in, in, that, in that strength to, to endure to receive that crown of life in Christ as he now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right. Um, so I think this is, uh, again, obvious why this is the, the passage for, for the Sunday, the temptation of Jesus. Uh, look at what it starts with. Blessed, verse 1, or verse 12, excuse me. Verse 12, blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, uh, for when he has st stood the test, he will receive the crown of life. That's what we're reading about, right? That's what, that's what the, the temptation of Jesus is, is, is all about, that, that he is the one who's tempted those 40 days. He's the one who, who has the temptations during his ministry. You, um, you know, I, I referenced uh, yes, if Sunday in the, in the sermon, um, I referenced Peter, Peter telling Jesus that he wouldn't let, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't let him go to the cross. And, and of course, what's Jesus say? Get behind me, Satan! Right? Because that's that's a temptation for him. Of course, he doesn't want to have to endure the cross. He wants the he he wants what Peter wants. He wants that glory without the without the the, the suffering, right? Um, but uh, but but then he's still steadfast in that. And on the cross itself, he remains steadfast when they tell him to to get down to prove who he he really is. And uh, of course, the irony is that he proves who he is in that faithfulness, right? As he as he does the will of the Father, he proves who he really is. And so so we seek to also prove who we are um, by by being faithful in the midst of temptation as well um, Christ has redeemed us he has made us his own and and he has adopted us in the waters of baptism and so that's who we seek to to show that we are and um, and, and there's a blessing in, in that steadfastness when uh, in, in the reception of the crown, crown of life which God has promised to those who love him and of course the in the end, it's Christ who has loved us, and and uh, Christ who, who ultimately gives us His crown of life, um, and His mercy. Um, so then, verse thirteen: Let no one say when he is tempted, "I am being tempted by God," uh, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and He Himself tempts no one. And and so so here here now as we're talking about temptation, I think this is a really helpful verse. Uh, it, it's easy for us to to. Um, 
to get frustrated when we're tempted and that sort of thing. Well, but but we have to recognize it's not God tempting us. Now now we see God testing the Israelites. We see that that often. Uh, so so there's some sense where God tests us. And the testing we have to understand is is a means to what does he what does he say when he says he's going to test them? It's to to prove there that they are. Uh, I, gosh, I can't think of the wording, but um, but but it's it's a, it's a proving. It's not like a, a trick. It's not like he's trying to trick us, you know. Um, and so I think about that in the Lord's prayer: "Lead us not into temptation." Right. So so guide our road that, that we would be led led away from from the place where we would be would be tempted. Um, but when we are tempted, we understand it's not by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and He Himself tempts no one. Uh, instead. Uh, well, actually, let me let me look read a read a note here from Luther on that. God does not test in order that we may fear and hate Him like a tyrant, but to the end that He may exercise and stir up faith and love in us. Satan, however, tempts for evil in order to draw you away from God and to make you distrust and blaspheme God. Right. So that's the temptation comes from the, from the devil, uh, and yourself. Right. Uh, but each person is tempted when uh, he is lured and enticed by what by his own desire, right? Think about when uh, God tempts no one, but we pray in this petition that uh, that, that we would... Um, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on that. Um, that. That we would not be be, be led away by, by the devil of the world and our own sinful nature, which would seek to lead us to, to uh, false belief and, and, and despair and other great shame and vice, right? As, as, as it says in the, the, um, the petition in the Lord's Prayer. Um, so, so that's our, our own sinful nature tempts us, our own desire. And when that desire conceives, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Right? So here it's desire. Desire leads to sin. Sin brings about death. So we, we rest then in the life of Christ. Don't, don't be bound to your sin. Don't continue sinning. That grace may abound. No, that's, that's a bondage to death. Instead... And walk in the newness of life in Christ that is your your baptismal life right uh, so then continuing do not be deceived uh, 16 here verse 16 do not be deceived my beloved brothers every good gift and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change um, so that's a the, the father of lights that's a reference to to the the lights in the sky right to those you see those moving and, and the the understanding at the the, the time of, of the, that this was written um, I'm, not, I'm not saying that this is James's understanding per se, but but the understanding of, of the, the the cultures was that you, you would have um, zodiacs and, 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 and horoscopes and those sorts of things. Those are important because they understood that the, the lights actually um, at the least indicated something, if not actually affected it, right? Um, but they're shifting, and so you have changes because of these things, and and, and they, they they draw the will to them, and and, and um, but but this is God is not the one who is like that. He is the one who is steadfast and and. Um, there is no variation or shadow due to change. Um, there's, there's only the, the good, the, 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 the steadfast, steadfastness in Him, and uh, so every good and perfect gift is, 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 is from Him. And and, and the notes that uh, God provides everything we need, including uh, references to, to what's before this verse five, wisdom, verse nine, exaltation, and what we're going to read here in a second, which is new life. So. God gives us that of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures and um, I always like to point out that this is you know James is the book that people will often point to when they say well you you Lutherans that say you're saved by grace through faith alone you're wrong because the only place where it says faith alone in the New Testament is is James 2 uh, 2 I think 23 and um, where it says that man is not saved by faith alone but uh, because faith faith without works is dead uh, see, you, you see then that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. Right, that's 2:24. And uh, but what you see, you see grace through faith. That's that's an understanding of faith that sees it as an intellectual ascent. Right, the true faith will always have works with it. Right, faith. It is true. Faith without works is dead. We agree with James when he says that. Just a few verses before 24. And so, but we see it still is about God's working that faith in us. Uh, of his own will he brought forth by the word of truth brought us forth excuse me brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures you know he he raises us through that word um we're, we're born that which is born imperishable is raised by the imperishable word i think that's first peter let me see here if it's got a cross reference to that 
it looks like First Peter one, maybe twenty three, I, I think. Um, so, so you know, so God does this, and He does this by the by the, in essence, by the faithfulness of Christ when He's in tempta- when He was tempted, that He was faithful in our place, and He could do this so such that, um, that we are unable. Uh, so verse. First Peter 1, verse 23, Since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. And that's, uh, that's what Christ has done for us. He's made us anew in him. Thanks be to God. All right, we continue with, uh, with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.